Since it acquired Time Warner five years ago, Hachette UK has been this country's largest book publisher. From its French roots, the Hachette Group operates across India, Ireland, Australia and New Zealand. It's as well known for its top position as a children's book publisher as it is for its education titles and its fiction list promotes some of our most acclaimed authors. But as with all publishers in today's world, the operating ground has shifted. So we've come along to find out from Chief Executive Tim Healy Hutchinson how the company is embracing new technology to forge growth. Tim, within the digital revolution, where has Hachette positioned itself? We think that digital just changes everything in book publishing as well as other parts of the media. We've, we've offered uh, enhanced ebooks that have audio, video, all sorts of gizmos, but that's not what people want. They just want to read a book, plain vanilla, on an e-reader, and they mostly, they mostly like specialist e-ink readers, uh, like uh, the Kindle and the Kobo. Yes, tell and, us a little and, and it's become huge. I mean, it's, uh, it's more than 10% of our sales this year and it will be near to 20% next year. So tell us a little bit more about your partnerships with Amazon, Apple and Sony and the way in which your company um, manages uh, e-book distribution channels but still retains its own a sense of control of costs and, and revenue? Well, we've been quite assertive with our big customers, including Amazon, who's the, uh, our biggest customer. Um, so we set the prices, we set the commission that they get, we give all uh, e-tailers the same commission, and by that means we have uh, a, a established what we're going to get, what they're going to get, and what the author's going to get. And that assertiveness, which uh, caused battles to start with, has really paid off. Putting numbers under the spotlight, in 2010 the company brought in revenue of 2,165 million euros, published 15,802 new titles and employed close to 7,500 staff worldwide. And how have your publishing houses carried their, their main clients, their authors, with them into this digital age? Well, that's a key question because um, an author can go directly to Amazon, which has something between 60 and 80 percent of the ebook market. Um, and so we have to redefine what we can do for the author. And I think there's a danger that publishers just do what they used to do um, mm. and could be marginalized. But we don't have to do that. We, we, we have to develop new digital competencies and to offer a a compelling array of services to, to authors to maintain our position, and we have. I mean, very l little in the way of of uh, quality business has gone directly to Amazon or or Apple. Even though Amazon are putting out a very strong calling card for well-known authors to join its new publishing list. Well, they're doing their best, but um, it took over a hundred years to establish Hodder and Stoughton, um, and we have very deep backlist. We're still selling the Enid Blyton books that we published in the 1920s and 1930s, the John le Carre books that we published in the 70s, and so on. And they'll find it takes a long time to build a publishing house and that you have to work very hard to satisfy your authors. Your company's uh, currently uh, offering 5,000 digitalized titles. Mm. Uh, so what have you got coming up in the new year? Well, well in fact, we had 5,000 digitized titles at the end of last year, but we've now got 10,000. And double the number, yes, yes, fantastic. We, we double the number and, uh, and by the end of next year we'll have about 15,000 and it'll probably plateau around there because we, although we have something like 30,000 viable titles, the last few are really quite, quite small economically. with reading devices of introducing a whole new experience for readers, isn't there? People are, are talking about publishers introducing uh, sound effects, 
video, pictures? Yes, absolutely. And what we've done is make absolutely sure that we have the competence to do all those things. And it does work, for example, with children's picture books. Um, and we're selling those both as e-books and as apps. Um, and uh, it, it's a great experience for children, you know, even if they're doing it with their parent, um, to have the music and to have animation and so on. So, it, uh, and I think we'll see more and more of it with uh, cookery and uh, other illustrated books becoming animated. Uh, and in, in, a, in the end, th they will divorce from a book. There'll be lots of products which have got nothing to do with the book, which we don't do in a book format. Um, uh, and we have the competence. But the interesting thing at the moment is people don't want it. They want, they want simplicity. The demand has to come from the public and not to be pushed out by the publisher. The other thing that's different is that uh, the marketing is completely changing. And books, uh, the booksellers don't want to take so many copies and they're waiting for us to create the demand. And we're creating a lot of that demand online through social networking, through all sorts of other um, digital means. In many ways, it's creating a whole new genre, isn't it, of, of an oh, audience? Oh, very much so, yes. Ultimately, publishers are, are dealing in information and entertainment and it shouldn't matter to us too much what the platform is. Tim Healy-Hutchinson, Chief Executive of Hashed, thank you very much for talking to us. It's a pleasure.